Welcome to the Pile of Salt podcast. My name is Hank. With me is Ben. Yeah. Hey. Well, hey. So, what are we talking about? We have uh, topics. Uh, yeah. Things might be talked about. Yeah. But, uh, maybe not one thing. I expect digression. It's, well, it's a general thing. Um, so recently sure. on the Pure 39 podcast, uh, we recorded an episode about that was intended to be about uh, a multitude of horror films uh, and and like weird films uh, from mostly A24. And we ended up only talking about the, the film that we had like just watched, which was The Lobster. Mm-hmm. So there was a lot unsaid. And it also had gotten me thinking, um, this is easily like, let's see, I watched The Lighthouse and I watched St. Maud. And by watching those two films, I watched more horror films than I have in like the last two years. <laughs> so, um, like films that weren't like campy or or like B movies or whatever. Um, sure. Uh, you know, films where I actually felt a little bit of horror, and yeah, it just got me thinking about the genre as a whole and. And all that stuff. So, um, the the main thought that I had, and I'm curious, do you, if you, it, it, it feels like one of those moments where, you know, some people, like, don't know that other people experience things differently. Like, like some people, when they're, like, 20 or whatever, they're like, wait, mm. you, you have an inner monologue? What? You can, like, picture shit in your mind? And they don't realize that, like, most people can do that and they, they don't realize that they're it's not normal that they can so i'm wondering mm. i'm wondering when you see something on the on the big screen like a um a, a negative act like uh in in the raid the the dude getting domed with a hammer or like someone like any like marriage story or whatever do you imagine it happening to you I don't. Yeah, see, that's kind of what I thought. I habitually, like, it, I realize that maybe this isn't a thing that everybody does. This is why my tolerance of horror is not, and, like, gore and shit is low. I uh-huh. I cannot not imagine things just happening to me. Like, mm-hmm. when I watch Constantine, I, I'm going to vividly pretend what it's like to have that glass digging into my wrists. <laughs> Like, like I, uh-huh. I just can't stop it. When I saw that snot nosed kid in, um, uh, in Kung Fu Hustle, I'm, uh-huh. I, I don't want to, but I'm definitely gonna imagine like his snot touching me. I don't like it, but that's where it goes every single time, and I don't know how to stop it. So I realized like it's probably, probably not how most people approach like horror no. stuff so yeah that would do it so that's i don't know kind of a nice sort of thing of closure i guess like i don't like <laughs> i don't like people slitting their arms in movies because i imagine my arm getting slit open yeah that's not where my brain goes go immediately there Your brain is more likely to go with like I, how did they do that how did they do that effect yeah <laughs> Yeah. Like the full remove. Yeah. And then I would go to like, what if that happened to me or whatever? Yeah, no, that sounds nice. Even and the... I'm like thinking about character stuff or whatever. <laughs> Even the fucking the snot nosed kid, it was so clearly fake. Like it was yeah, so uh-huh. clearly fucking fake and it didn't even matter. It didn't matter at uh-huh. all. <laughs> I hate it. You're just too immersed. Your immersion it's too deep. It's yeah. It's <laughs> and it doesn't happen with like good things either. Like if I'm watching a if I'm watching a film and some dude is getting his dick sucked, I'm not like, oh nice. That would feel great. <laughs> nope. But if the if the, if the person bites down, suddenly I'm imagining what it would feel like to have my dick chopped off. <laughs> it's a terrible one way street. Do I do not recommend. Don't imagine things happening to you. <laughs> Oh, 
And it doesn't okay. happen with like other shit. Like if I'm reading a book or something, it's whatever. If I'm reading, mm -hmm. if I'm like playing a game or something, it's whatever. Most of the time. Um, but like reading Dracula and they're talking about like the blood transfusions and shit. Like that yeah, was fine. But mm -hmm. ugh. yeah, I don't know. sometimes I'll even like dream in third person. I don't know if I've dreamed in third person. I'm sure I have at some sometimes. point, but that's a rare. Sometimes it's first person, but sometimes it's third person. I've heard that's because that's a very common in people who play video games. Like people who people who play games oh, tend weird. to tend to have mm -hmm. more varied and uh, like kind of crazy dreams, and also will dream in like third person, like a mix. And people who don't mm -hmm. tend to just dream mostly, if not only, in, in first person. I mean, if people played only first person video games, <laughs> maybe they would dream in first person. I mean, yeah, if you're only out here playing Counter Strike. There's a study to be done. You, you only. I need play, more. I need more direct data. You <laughs> only play RTS games, so your yeah. dreams are just a top-down perspective of everything. Uh huh. Yeah, all your dreams are the top-down perspective. Hey. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, um, shut up. Yeah. So, for the most part, I got like a twenty-four films were. Pretty, pretty solid. Um, got into some stuff. I mean, there are a lot of A twenty four films. So honestly, I I'm mean, not. I, I don't know which ones you're talking about. I and I don't, and I also don't necessarily see their filmography as like that, like singular. That is a production company. Uh, like they do yeah. A, pretty wide variety of oh, stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so I was kind of curious what, like, if it just happened to be you watched some movies that were put out by them, so you're um, like, oh, you saw a connection. Part of them? Because they have put out a lot of good movies. They are one of the better current, like, yeah, smaller production companies. No, it was definitely a, like, a coincidence. Like, because, mm -hmm. uh, Foxy had recommended Saint Maud, and I'm like, okay, that sounds mm -hmm. like religious horror stuff with a slightly different take. That's not like demons possessing people or whatever. Like, I'm down. That sounds cool. And I mentioned it to Syl, and she's like, oh, this is A24. I'm like, yeah, sure. And I, <laughs> I looked it up, and it's like, oh, they did the Lighthouse, which I'd been wanting to watch and had downloaded. And then I'm like, oh shit, mm -hmm. like Ex Machina, and um. I, I haven't watched it, but, like, Midsummer and all the, like, you know, tons of recognizable stuff. So, mm -hmm. I had just seen, like, a, a enough of them. I'm like, you know what? That actually makes sense. Like, the kind of the tone and the artsy style-ish. Like, there's, I could, I could see how they're lumped. Even if they're, like, different things many times. Yeah, like, I don't know that I would lump in... The end of the tour, which is about like about a, an interview with David Foster Wallace. Yeah, yeah. Or like eighth grade. <laughs> yeah, they had like they had a a nature documentary like about elephants. Mm -hmm. So I, was, I mean, yeah, it's it's varied, but there's like with their horror-ish stuff there's like that that theme, that vibe i guess it's not a theme it's a vibe they got their break their first breakout hit was spring breakers hell yeah vibe <laughs> and but well, yeah i mean i've seen a lot of their movies so i will say the for the things that i saw not not a hundred percent but it was just a lot of um, like choose your own decide what happened like the film is gonna end without closure I'm like oh to a certain extent you mean they're not like basic bitch movies I see I don't I like one. closure I like closure <laughs> I don't like having the I mean uh, Midsummer kind of has closure so I wouldn't know 
I uh, you know I what? Mean, I hate ask... that movie, but it kind of has closure. I was I'm so curious about that film, but I just think you know what the the vibe of that film is not serial friendly and I refuse to test the oh, theory. No. Like I mean, I don't know what the content is, but I I'm not testing that out, honestly. I really want to say what happens, but I don't know if you don't want spoilers or something. Uh but I, the easy way to describe it at the end is they carve a bear into a vagina and stick a dude in it, and then he gets burned alive. That's how it ends. Oh. Yeah, that's... I mean, maybe Simple it'd be fine. <laughs> you can't imagine your vagina There is the most up. awkward orgy. Most awkward orgy. Isn't that all orgies that aren't? professionally filmed well like the dude kind of gets freaked out and it's kind of if like if the movie were more like treated it like a slapstick comedy i would think it's really funny (laughs) but the movie's so self-serious that i hate it (laughs) yeah yeah um you saw somebody eat something and somebody put a pubic hair in it it's that kind of movie not serial friendly a pub like singular yeah like they pull out a hair of what they were eating it's a pubic hair from a woman fuck's sake the internet lied to me this whole time i like again with like imagining things happening. i mean it might have been more i, I might not re- i might be misremembering like more than that, but... i somewhere some i i thought it was like a lot like, I thought it was a gross... I didn't think it was... First off, I didn't think it was actual food. And second, and more importantly, I thought it was a large amount of hair. I don't know, like... It's, mm. I, I think someone on, on a Reddit post was just not differentiating between single hair in food and person mm-hmm. made to eat pubic hair. <laughs> so naturally, oh, gotcha. um, with my... Is it? I I don't even know what it is. I need to like look into this. I don't like it, but like suddenly I'm just imagining like a fucking mass, like just a, a oh. an absurd amount of hair being forced to be consumed, and that's no good. Bad. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to say it's not gross, but <laughs> I mean, sure, but it's still but, bad. But, but like, you know, it's. I hate that that movie. It's also I. I think it's like super misogynistic in the way the writer wrote it. Great. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't so. have a. I don't have a strong urge to see it. I don't even really have an urge to see yeah. it. Honestly, it's also like it's just like a worse version of a movie I love, which is the original Wicker Man. Right. Right. Yeah. Um. So you've seen the lighthouse. The Lighthouse, though. I fucking love that movie. It's very good. William Dafoe is... <laughs> Hark, dude. Fucking great. Um, Dude, when, when William Dafoe gets butt hurt about dude not liking his cooking, that is top tier. That is yeah, like, the, that is such a good scene. When he does the monologue about Poseidon? Yes. Yeah. But Fine. also how... How hurt he is yeah. about the dude not liking his cooking. Yeah. <laughs> so, this is one of the ones where I was like, I wanted, <laughs> I wanted more. Um, mm. Like I, obviously, it's one where I can certainly see why people like it because there's a discussion, like like in the sense that there's a discussion to be had about like the meaning of everything. Like people it's out here, it's pretentious as hell. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, I don't mind a bit of that. I don't mind an interpretation, but I don't want to. I don't want to have to do the whole thing. And this had like, I, I think the only thing that I really truly wanted was, I want to know who was right. Like, I want to know which one of them was telling the truth of things. Because they flip, you know, they keep flipping it back and forth. 
and I don't. I don't know who was right. I want to know who was right. Damn it! Also, that screaming at the end when he looks into the light. Uh Absolutely cursed. Absolutely fucking cursed. I mean, that's when the movie does its 2001 thing. I'm trying to. What do you mean? Oh, it's just uh, like it's 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 like it it's just aping 2001 in terms of like oh the dude sees the thing looks into the void and it's weird uh yeah <laughs> more than anything and we get to do our our visual nightmare thing yeah which is like you know i'm i'm cool with it but that scream very sure it's distorted as i don't like it I, I can't you you what you wanted was for the movie to tell you who was right fucking they were both shitbirds i don't <laughs> i'm i like i want to know if one or both of them were crazy <laughs> yes <laughs> both okay we're it's like i don't know robert pattinson is seeing Tentacle creatures. Is he mm-hmm. crazy? William the foe is like, yo, you just destroyed the last boat we had. Is he crazy? Or is Robert Pattinson like destroying shit and he do- we're seeing things from his perspective, so we think that William the foe is lying. I just want to know. Ultimately, it doesn't matter. It was a great watch. I like William the foe as a sea captain <laughs> it's a scurvy yeah. sea dog I don't know I can't wrap my head around the way you're watching that movie if that's what you care about I mean that's not well it's, I it's not like I watched the whole thing caring about that <laughs> like I didn't turn it on and be like alright let's see which one is nuts but like <laughs> at the end I mean, it's not, I'm, I'm probably making it sound like more of a deal. I want to know, but like, I mean, it's not going to keep me up at night or anything. Not like, uh, look, the, have you also seen The Lobster? I have not seen The Lobster. Okay. That one's worse in that regard for me, but more, it's a, it's a very direct thing and it's not the whole film. Um Okay. Yeah, I don't know. It was it was still it was still good. I I like the lighthouse. Yeah, I don't know. William Defoe gives that speech. That's a good speech. That monologue was fucking fantastic, dude. I want to like it's one of the few times when I've wanted to memorize something to bust out on somebody <laughs> when they're being a little prick. <laughs> it's so good. So raw. I just let and it's so petty. <laughs> it's yeah, over yeah, such a yeah. fucking petty thing. <laughs> yeah. Man. Ugh. No, I, like, aside from who's, like, right or wrong or whatever, like, that movie is still so good. I did, uh-huh. I'll, I'll admit, um, when I first heard about it, and I've, like, the only thing I knew was that it was Robert Pattinson and Willem Dafoe. And they were on an island with a lighthouse. And I, like, I had no idea that it was horror. I'll Mm. I'll admit, when I found out, like, it didn't stop me. But I was a little disappointed. I was hoping it was going to be, like, a old... They just had a great old time? Yeah. I mean, (laughs) going with the... Going with the, uh, (laughs) the, some of the scenes that we get in in, in the film we have, you know... Maybe in my non-horror version, they actually would have kissed. Uh-huh. Don't they come really close? They get extremely close. <laughs> I, I remember I looked up, I you know, of course, afterwards, I like wanted to learn a bit more about the film and like look it up and all that shit. And I forget if it was the writer, the director, or if they're the same person or whatever, but he was like reading the... Sub t- reading the homoerotic subtext in this film would be like reading the blue subtext in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> and I think was it? I think it was. I I forget which one of them it was, but 
one of the two was like, yeah, one of the scenes where we're like chasing each other around and like crawling on the floor or whatever. Like we definitely pulled pants down in a couple of those takes. Like it was not <laughs> even a thing. Oh, so good. I cooped up, dude. Yeah, that mermaid trinket. Really getting mileage out of it. True. No, oh, it was a. Uh... That dream's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mostly, I remember that speech, and I remember him killing the shit out of that seagull. <laughs> he annihilates that seagull, dude. Really gives it the business. Yeah. What did you like? I mean, there's another. There's another A twenty four movie we already talked about, which was Uncut Gems. Which I think it's right, the last thing they put out. Right, Uncut Gems. I'm like, I knew there was one more that was like one that I had seen that I just didn't know. You know what? That yeah. ending was worse. <laughs> I was far more frustrated. Uh, that that had closure. It had closure. <laughs> shot it was in not, the face. It was not the closure I wanted. <laughs> It was the closure I wanted. That was definitely the closure that needed to happen in that movie. That dude sucked. <laughs> my problem was no, my see, you're not wrong. My thing was I also wanted the dude who who killed him. I wanted him to die as well. He oh. was also annoying to me. Everybody was annoying in that film. Everybody, you know what that you know what ending they deserved? Was it uh, Night of the Living Dead? The zombie mist where they bombed the city? Return of Return the of the Living Dead, right? Yeah, they deserve that ending. <laughs> That's the <laughs> one they deserve. Uh, that was a that was a good ride, though. Good one. Um, so obviously the uh, you know lighthouse filmed in black and white and all of that stuff. Yeah. Um. I saw a thing because I learned a while back. Well, I actually think like the fact that it's four by three is is a bigger deal. Yeah, to make yeah. Make it all claustrophobic. -y. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it worked. I I like the. I like that. Yeah, it was cool. Um, it had a purpose. There was a reason it was oh, like that. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, they used whatever. I don't know. I read briefly about like the equipment and stuff. Oh, it's cool. Mm -hmm. I'm down for that. Um, kind of in... And see, like, this film, I was like... I, I really enjoyed the black and white. Like, especially when they were doing shots of the ocean and stuff. Because, like... Mm -hmm. That mild thalassophobia or whatever. <laughs> like, I... It was... I like those shots. And... It was making me think of how... Apparently, there's a... Like a... Oh, I forget what it's called. Like, a monochrome edition of Mad Max Fury Road. <laughs> like it's just black and white mm -hmm. and i remembered i think it was I, I suppose it was the director like he kind of i think originally wanted to film it in black and white um then obviously didn't but they released this edition and i saw people talking about how like supposedly black and white uh makes you focus more on the acting and not the other shit that's all around and I just don't, I don't know. I'm trying to imagine, like, I think Mad Max in black and white is not as, it doesn't matter as much as, as the lighthouse in black and white. Sure. I don't know. I guess the difference probably is, you know, if it was intentionally done or if it was just done at, like, did you just put, throw a filter on afterwards, you know? Yeah. Like I think I think Mad Max in black and white is not as effective. And I think the lighthouse in color would also be not as effective. I mean also with the I mean, as you mentioned, the four three ratio. But Yeah. I don't know. It was just an interesting yeah, I don't know. thing. As long as it looks good, that's like the big thing. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Um but I do think the way Fury Road uses color is so important to that movie. I can't imagine I'm watching that movie up black and white version of that yeah honestly. dude i it's <laughs> like that doesn't sound yeah great 
because they put a lot of like the color is wild. I mean, they put a lot of work into the color. Yeah, <laughs> like, man. that is not how that that's not how the world naturally looks. Yeah, yeah. No, so. I, I'm I'm actually thinking about double dipping on Mad Max this weekend. <laughs> it's too good. You could watch the other Mad Max movies and have a worse time. I was actually meaning to ask eventually about the other ones. Yeah. Are they worth, uh-huh. it, worth it at all? Uh, they're okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I feel like I started at the top and I don't want to climb down. Yeah. Like, there is the <laughs> Mel Gibson-ness of it all. But... Mm. Uh, the first one's not great. It has, like, extreme pacing issues. Gotcha. And it, it kind of doesn't... It like, it like, there's just a whole part of that movie where he goes on vacation with his family, and it's just, like, biding time until they get murdered. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> lead with it. It's a weird... And it's not, like... It doesn't ha- really have the aesthetics of... Yeah. The med- it, like, they haven't developed that. Like, the costumes people have are, like... <laughs> what they showed up with or whatever fuck yeah like you don't really get the full aesthetic until thunder or thunderdome which is the third one but that has uh i would say you know he secret hidden village of children problems oh (laughs) yeah that's that's a there's a phrase that's a (laughs) <laughs> no good. No. Uh, yeah. I I don't oh, yeah. think Road I'll, Warrior is pretty good. I don't think I'll go back to them honestly. That's fair. Yeah. yeah. There's a kind of progression through those through the four movies, but um, Fury Road is just so much better <laughs> that it's hard to recommend the other ones. Yeah. As much as they did matter on get, the way getting there. Yeah. Anya definitely thought that it was going to be more of a horror vibe because of the first, like, minute or whatever it is where you get, like, all those hallway shots and, like, breathing sounds as he's trying to escape. (laughs) And it's, like, running it in fast motion. Yeah. With the frame rate turned all up. Yeah, that was a... And I was kind of, I'm like, I don't think it's going to be all, I mean, I don't know. I don't think it's going to be all like this. And then, of course, it's only like that first minute, and then literally the yeah. entire rest of the film is different. Man. Yeah. That movie's so good. It's incredibly good. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. What is... We probably... We probably talked about this a little bit before, I guess. Maybe, maybe not in like such direct terms. Like, when did you start? When did you start doing like horror stuff in general? Horror stuff, uh, college. Okay. Any? Does this include? Are you including any media? uh, Like, did you did you ever do up like Goosebump books when you were little or something? I mean, I did up. I did up Goose. I definitely did Goosebumps. But, like, Goosebumps are pretty horror for babies. Well, I There mean, were Goosebumps books were... that I thought were too scary. I'm out here reading The Cuckoo Clock of Doom. <laughs> I'm not reading, like, I don't know. I don't know. I was a scaredy cat as a kid, I'll say. Like, my, my horror... I, like, I watched... I could handle Alien and Aliens, because they, they were sci-fi, too. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. I definitely didn't watch horror, partly because most of my all like oh, most of my movie watching I did with my dad. We would do like go to the video store every Friday and rent a couple movies, and uh, he was not he's not into horror, so mm-hmm. we would we would dive the barrel on we would like look for anything in basically every other section, but not the horror section. We weren't we weren't getting everything. Yeah. So there's a lot from there that, like, I would look at the boxes and go, that looks scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I never. But then in college, my friends got me into it, and I was 
at that point, then I was like in the right headspace for watching it. Yeah, it is. More deta- detached from it and pre- it, like appreciated it more as like the effects work or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It wasn't so much in it. <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't all about like, this is giving me nightmares. Yeah. My imagination is going to run wild with this stuff. Yeah. See, I, I don't know when I was little, I like, I did a shitload of goosebumps. Like, I don't even know how old I was under 10. <laughs> I mean, it fucking Goosebumps, not that scary. Okay. Uh, there was one. There's one that stayed with me, and it's like, um, well, two have stayed with me because one of them was about people who are made out of plants. So that you know that one stuck with uh, me for other reasons. Sure. Um, the one that like freaked me out when I was in like fourth grade or whatever. Uh, this. They go this the main character and like his sibling or something or just him, I don't know. But he goes to stay with his grandma and his dad is like, Don't get sick at grandma's and doesn't say anything else about it. And the kid gets sick and then his grandma is like trying to cure him with like all this crazy shit, like forcing him to sweat it out under wool blankets and he's like allergic to wool, so it's just miserable, and then there's like people inside the walls or something, and it just fucking descends into madness. <laughs> and this whole thing is just like it, it, it was a very cursed experience for me at the time. But then he like you find out at the end that it was all just a dream and that the main character oh. was actually a dog who was just having a bad dream. <laughs> so okay. I Yeah. But the whole ride was no I guess they wanted like I don't know, maybe maybe what's his name? Stein got to the end of it and he's like, Oh, this is too much. We gotta we gotta lighten the moment right at the end here. These kids are gonna have a bad time. But yeah, that was a or whoever was actually writing that book, or whoever was asleep. Like, you don't know. Maybe it, maybe it was early enough that it was the man himself. Possibly, who knows? Doubtful, but yeah. not me. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not gonna find out. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, by yeah. I mean, when when I say I was a scaredy cat, I mean, I went to bed every night afraid of the monsters that were clawing at me. And I had to, like, literally picture that there was, like, if I put my head under the covers, that that created the force field that kept me safe. And I had to, like, Hell yeah. that was actively what I was thinking about before going to sleep, unless I was passing out, like, every night until high school. <laughs> I am exhausting being that scared, just like yeah. randomly paranoid about the dark and stuff. Yeah, I definitely like I'll be real with you. If I'm at my parents house uh-huh. and I'm in like the there's like a part of the I, I, I layout to their house is so unorthodox. <laughs> like there are yeah. two completely separate basement levels that are kind of connected with with what is essentially a passageway and one half is completely furnished and just a normal ass room and the other half is like a basement that until recently was just chaos and whenever i was in the unfinished part for whatever reason like pulling something out and i would have to come back up the stairs and you have to like turn the light switch off as you leave the room to Uh this day i put a little extra pep in my step I don't want to. <laughs> uh, I don't want to deal yeah, with that. I don't sure. want to deal with that shit. It was awful for me. I think the the thing that broke me of that a little bit, like I guess, kind of getting thrown off the deep end, because I really didn't like the dark when I was super little. Like I none of that, uh-huh. none of that shit. Um, like had a nightlight and stuff for a very long time, just for comfort reasons. Um, when. I, we had like work done on our house and since we live in the middle of nowhere we never lock our door and these uh-huh. people locked our door so we had no way to get in our house and my mom's solution was uh rip out one of the windows to the, a little window in the basement and i was the only one who was both big enough to go through or small enough to go through and also big enough to like be aware of my surroundings so i had to go i had to like 
my mom like helped me descend through this window and like the basement was completely pitch black and i had to like go uh. to the door it was like the most harrowing journey of my entire life up until that point mm. it might actually still just be like second to my <laughs> canada hitchhiking <laughs> bit like it might uh-huh. just actually be the <laughs> god the walk across that room though i was like five or something oh man it was no good. But after that, I was a little better. Like, being forced to do that, I guess. Obviously, yeah, it could have it gone the other way, but... I mean, the reason that I don't feel that paranoia anymore is because I broke in high school. Like, I got to the point where, like, I emotionally, like, gave up. And it's like, alright, monsters, just kill me. Was, <laughs> like, I actually... Like, while walking home, like, it just got too much. And then... I was over it. Yeah. I was doing, uh, I mean, I was doing fine. Until I can still, it's, it, like, I could feel it come back sometimes, but, like, I just, I can completely handle it now, so. Yeah. But that really did. They really did just have a moment of breaking where, like, I'd spent so much time working myself up with paranoia that, uh, I don't know, I broke. Mm-hmm. Ego death or something. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. It was like, I don't know. It was fading. Like, obviously, you know, yeah, as I got older and stuff, it definitely faded and shit. But mm-hmm. li- living out in the middle of nowhere, it's real easy for that to come back real fucking quick. Like, sure. Uh, in high school, but before I could drive or any of my friends could drive. Uh, I'd stayed at a friend's house and, uh, I guess his mom drove us, like drove me back to my, my parents' house and he like tagged along or whatever. And we were driving a a dead end road. Like we were the last house on this road. Occasionally cars go past to go like, I don't know, either drink or fuck or both at the end of the road. Mm -hmm. But like, there's no reason for anyone else to be around. And as, we, like, we came up to the last corner before my house on this gravel road, there's just a bike, like a rusted bike laying on the road. And it's not a bike from my family. And that was... <laughs> I did not get much sleep that night. <laughs> just <laughs> listening for shit. It was awful. Ugh. Uh-huh. That's the worst. Living in a city is taken care of. Like, there's none of that now. Like actually watching horror films has become much easier because I'm like, I, my building has you know like five thousand people in it or whatever. Like, what are they? What are the odds the demons choose me? They'll choose the <laughs> loud ass fighting couple upstairs, making themselves uh-huh. heard. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. On the other hand, I guess I also, like, I, it's not, I mean, it's maybe the horror equivalent of, uh, or the horror film equivalent of, in music, like black metal and shit. I got into that pretty mm-hmm. early. And, like, definitely was at that point where I was a bit edgy about it. So, like, even there was stuff that, like, now there's no way in fuck I'm ever listening to this. But at the time, I'm like, yeah. Yeah, no one else is listening to this because they're babies listening to pop or things with intelligent Things that sound lyrics. good. Yeah, things that are pleasant to listen to. Idiots. You gotta listen to the <laughs> the band where the lead singer was rumored to have cut off his hands and replaced them with pig's feet and like bleeding all over his guitar at live shows. Yeah, that's real music. I don't like that music anymore. The lyrics were basically the sound that Robert Pattinson made at the end of Lighthouse. <laughs> does not does yeah, not do definitely it for not me. For me. Yep. Fourteen year old me was a jackass. <laughs> that checks out. Yeah. Yeah. Man, do you you have not seen Saint Maud, correct? I have not. Do you have plans on watching it or to watch it? Not really. 
Okay. I only really watch movies on my own. Mm. <laughs> All my I've watched. <laughs> see, the thing was, I was watching lots of movies, but it was specifically because I was going to the theater and watching them with a friend. So mm. when that stopped being a thing, I have I watched. My movie watching fucking fell off a cliff <laughs> last year. <laughs> so I've probably watched more movies with, um, because of barrel, burning barrel discord movie nights. Yeah. That I've watched uh, otherwise, except for stuff for the, the salt circle. Yeah. 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 Um, do you care about spoilers at all? <sighs> not like, no, not huge ones, but like shit that happens. Eh, maybe I don't okay. know. Okay. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. I will say I like I I definitely like the the take. It hit a it hit a very good um like it it gave <laughs> I guess it's really what I wanted out of the out of the lighthouse more so than just like who's who's not crazy, but it still makes you wonder a little bit. It makes you kind of question, but there is. There's like closure alongside of it. I don't know. It's hard to. It's not. It's a bad way to describe. But like, it was. It was enjoyable, even though there was some serial unfriendly things. But it's a good time. I I enjoyed it. I'm glad I didn't have Anya watch it with me. <laughs> Did she not handle horror or? Uh, she does not want to watch Alien. Okay. I mean, I mean it, Alien's pretty horrific. I'm like, eh, I'm surprised <laughs> I could handle it as a child, considering what I couldn't handle. Yeah. But that one never <laughs> wasn't a problem. The alien bursting from that person's chest, that's fine. I mean, for me, I guess, like, along with the sci-fi thing, I think part of it is that, like, it's a, it's like a... It feels more like a creature villain, like versus thing, you know. Yeah, because the thing, because Ripley, like it builds into Ripley fighting it, right? Yeah, yeah. It's not like so. I, I guess I viewed it more like that. It felt more like a an action game or something, or like Halo or whatever. I mean, obviously, I you know by the time I saw I mean, it, I'd aliens played way more feels that way. Yeah, yeah. Well, aliens, aliens more of an action movie. Aliens is just fucking Halo. There's a Pelican. There's Sergeant Johnson. Like, it's all there. It's the other way around, but yeah. Well, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, she's not. Actually, like... I would. I was very surprised uh, when I decided to watch Bird Box. She mm-hmm. like. I think she watched it the same way that some people watch, like, a, a, a horrific event unfolding in front of them, and they can't look away. <laughs> kind of that. <laughs> like, uh-huh. she was scared, but she didn't. She, like, kept watching. Yeah. That was, that's, like, my perfect, that's still, like, I, I know a lot of people have beef with that film, but that's, like, that's still my prime, my prime example for... Like the kind of horror I like. My example is Return of the Living Dead. Uh, that's also, you know, that's also very good. Like that's, a, <laughs> I guess I mean unless like if it's you know that's, I I don't yeah. know. It's too. It's that too one is fun. more comedy based. It's too fun to be scary. To me. Yeah, I, but again, I don't because I don't really get scared by movies yeah what i'm looking for is not how scary they are well yeah it is more how how entertaining i think they are how fun they are Mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily have to be comedy but because like i you know i watched all the saw movies and had an okay time those are those are fun in their own way Man, oh, that actually, uh, speaking of Saw movies, that reminds me. I definitely went the opposite way. Like, when you were talking about, um, like, when you were a kid, you were super scared, and now it's, like, whatever. 
Uh, mm -hmm. Not not really with scary stuff, but especially with like gore and like any violence or whatever. When I was little, it just didn't affect me like at all. I could, I'd be like someone could have gotten like fucking skinned alive in front of me on TV, and I just it would yeah. not have phased me. And now, obviously, <laughs> no good. Yeah, no, it's. I would say it went more from. Like, for gore, probably, like, not affecting me, really. It wasn't, it wasn't really, like, I love action movies, so, like, violence was fun. Yeah, dude. It was fun. But as I get older, like, I really enjoy <laughs> gore in movies more and more. It just, like, it. I just find it more and more entertaining. Just. <laughs> yeah. Uh. But like that's because it's fake. Because <laughs> yeah, like yeah. the 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 effects work of it, the the like oh they fucking went for it. Uh, yeah, that that's what I'm getting out of it. So it's a whole whole different experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, but I would say that like that part that part only is only becoming more entertaining to me I, I like gore more and more whereas there was like a point maybe in my early 20s or teenage where i would say like i'm not into movies that are just all about gore that's not that's not enough it's like yeah that can kind of be enough sometimes and now <laughs> you're know. like a bloodbath you say yeah i probably started to change when i watched kill bill where like people's arm limbs get cut off in that, and there's like a fountain of blood, and it's fucking hilarious. Yeah, uh, that was probably like some kind of turning point where, it's, in terms of like the way I thought about that stuff changing. Okay, I think I've seen like the first twenty minutes of Kill Bill or something. I feel like I did see a fight, but I definitely did not finish that film. For unrelated reasons. Mm -hmm. The movie's kind of... The first one's kind of one long fight. Mm. Yeah, I don't even... I don't even remember She anymore. fights the Crazy 88. Yeah, which sure. Which is a showdown. Why not? There's a part in the middle of that movie that's anime. It just becomes anime for a bit. <laughs> Fuck yeah. I didn't know that. That's cool. Yeah, well you get... um backstory on the villain oh okay a lucy lose character it's all it's animated um can i be real with you sure i consistently in name only get lucy lou confused wait you know what you know what hang on i'm gonna i want to look this up before i open my mouth yeah, okay. Um, for some reason, I was very under the impression that Lucy Liu was the name of the person, uh, what's her name, on The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. I don't know why I got this in okay. my head. But it definitely, it definitely happened. So, like... I never watched The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, so I don't know who you're talking about. Okay, now I gotta look up another thing. <laughs> Sweet Life of Zack and Cody cast. I get her confused for no reason at all with Brenda's song. They don't look anything alike. Their names are drastically different. But for some fucking reason, I was like... You got those wires, Quart Rost. I guess. Uh, there was an article about Sweet Life of Zack and Cody on one page of the magazine, and on the next page it was a Lucy Liu interview, and I was like, yeah, obviously, <laughs> she's the, she's in the show. <laughs> Who fucking knows? Weird. Yeah. Yeah, just one of those. Um. Yeah, I mean, there's a... It's <laughs> I think my favorite... Uh, I guess it's it's not the exact same situation, but one of my favorite memories of things that Peter has told me is when he was in his media class in university, and 
in front of the entire class, he referred to her as Scarlett Johnson. <laughs> uh, it's just so good because it's such an easy mistake if you're not like thinking about it or something, or if you just don't uh, a mix of whatever. It is just so great. Yeah. Uh -huh. Johnson. Scarlett Johnson. Like it's like a porn star version or something. Um, oh, that's the that's the other film I wanted to to mention briefly because I've seen it recently and it was a little maybe a little much in some ways. Uh, Color Out of Space, the recent one. Yeah, I saw that one in a theater. Nice. Before. What was your what's your I know you probably already talked about it. And I know Paul has talked about it a bit. What was your What was your take? I didn't love it. I was kind of bored. <laughs> when I was talking with my friend about it, my he he liked it more than I did, and the conclusion I came to is, it just don't actually like uh, <laughs> Lovecraftian like actual pacing. <laughs> I need. Mm -hmm. more character <laughs> and story and stuff because it seemed like a pretty good adaptation but see not what i like as much i thought it was not a great adaptation i did not get the <laughs> i did not get the same vibes at all from that film that i got from the the story huh maybe it's a I guess maybe it's a, a good adaptation for, like, maybe what people would want from that story now, I guess, in that sense. You know, like a, an updated take. Like, there's a lot more of I mean, the, you uh, can only do updated takes huh? on his stuff. <laughs> you can't do... Going well, back to, like, figure okay. out what he was thinking, that's a mistake. Well, it's... Okay, from my uh, from my recollection, I don't think Color Out of Space was a particularly nasty story in any way. It was a very simple. I'm one. just saying that stuff's hidden away in like the bones of his mythology. Yeah, sure, but I mean, just taking that story, like I don't. They they changed a lot. As far as like where the where the horror comes from, like there was I unless I'm really really misremembering, there was not any of the like shit getting fused together and like all that stuff. It was much more. I mean, it was probably it probably would be more boring to a lot of people. The one thing they added that I did like is when uh. The dude at the end, when the when the chick is, who is like trying to be a witch or whatever, and she like uh -huh. had the symbol on her head, and the guy looks into it and sees like that other dimension, that was fucking great. But I really hated that his eyes didn't melt out of his skull and he like died immediately. <laughs> That's the sort of shit where like if you see that you're supposed to go immediately insane, and this dude's just like fine ish. I don't know. I thought the movie was okay, well done, but did not work for me. So I don't have strong thoughts on yeah. it. Yeah. I, I guess I really didn't, I didn't know like how many changes they would make. Like even the, even to the point of like having it be set in a, in a modern setting. I didn't know that was a, a thing at all. Just, uh, yeah. Thought it was thought it was gonna be a bit different. It was still like it was fine. The tone was <laughs> the tone was jarring. Again, watched that alone, and I was like at at night and everything. I'm like, hmm, hmm. At least I'm not in the country. They can't get me here. <laughs> did you think it was gonna be like? I don't know. What did you? I mean, I thought like I thought it was gonna be, like in the same time period. 
Like, I didn't think there was going to be smartphones and shit. No, I meant in terms of the country thing. Like, you oh. thought it wasn't going to be horror. No, like <laughs> I knew it would be, be weird. I again, I I I know the story. I did not expect all of the like people getting fused together and like that side of shit. I, I didn't know there was going to be that stuff involved. Okay. I haven't read the story, so I don't mm. have the context. Yeah, there's not that. I guess the story is pretty much the... Probably the... Um, like the psychological stuff that's happening. But uh-huh. not the body horror stuff or like the llamas getting fused together or whatever. Um, yeah. And not the... There wasn't the any... body horror stuff is the stuff that was I was more inclined to like. If the, yeah, if yeah. I feel like the pacing. <laughs> yeah, sure. Too slow for me. Um, there was much more like, I think the original story is like slower. Like, there's more of an element of like, oh my god, people. <laughs> <laughs> this movie well, wasn't slow enough. Well, it's slower in the sense of like too much happens. They don't. They don't. I mean, that's why I was kind of confused when they said they're remaking color like when they're making a film out of color out of space i'm like there's what the fuck are you making it into like a mockumentary like half of that story is them analyzing the meteor as it gets smaller and that was fast tracked in in the film and there's not near the first mention you get of like anything alien explicitly is like near the end there's like one um like there's the shit in the well like that's where all this is coming from and at the very end like they the entities i guess i'll say like they go back into space wherever they came from or something except one one trails off from the a beam of light or whatever the hell and that's kind of the point that one of these fucky things is now on earth somewhere um and it's just much i don't know it's much less that doesn't sound like a movie (laughs) well yeah you could see my confusion when i first heard about this like i was down but like (laughs) there are other lovecraft stories with cool shit already built in where you don't need to just manufacture it so, yeah, I mean, for from a, a a business perspective, from a success perspective, like I'm sure this is the better film to make. <laughs> Supposedly, I think I saw it afterwards when I like w- went on the wiki page. I think he's making a Dunwich Dunwich Horror next. Which is actually that one actually has good shit in it. Like that story is that that's a film worthy story. So that uh-huh. that'll be cool if it happens, if and when. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> and I haven't, I have not seen it yet, but I wanted your take because I know, uh-huh. I know, other people who really 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 like it and i think it's critically well received and shit what are what are your thoughts on the witch or the vitch i did not i haven't seen it you haven't seen it okay no again same director as midsummer so i'm not inclined to see it because i fucking hate that movie now i thought it came out before midsummer yeah oh I so I was gonna see the witch, <laughs> but my train got delayed and I missed, and I forgot my phone. Like it was a whole thing. So my mm. friend went and saw it, and I didn't, and he hated it. <laughs> oh, and we have generally similar taste, so then I never bothered. <laughs> okay, interesting. Do you know what he hated about it? No, I don't remember. Okay. Oh, no, no, it's not the same director as Midsommar. That's a different director. I'm bad. I'm besmirching. <laughs> he was just the director of Hereditary, which I also haven't seen. 
What what else did the witch director do? Something. Uh, now I have to look it up. Probably. Robert Eggers. Oh, the lighthouse. Wow. I did look. Yeah, that, that, that this certainly went in a different direction. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Sorry, I got I got confused. I don't know, um Yeah, I don't know. My friend didn't like it. I trust his his taste and I just didn't bother. Yeah. I can't. I mean that's And again, I like cuz I I watch movies when I'm seeing them in the theater. I don't have time for movies. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't for whatever reason to work up the energy for me to watch a movie on my own does not happen that, as often. Yeah. So I mean, I feel like doing is I, here for two hours in front of a movie. Yeah. Oh, dude. Because like I it's... like, I'm, I just can't, I can't like do the multitask with a movie. If I'm going to watch a movie, I'm going to watch it. My problem is I have a lot of movies I want to watch that are in foreign languages. Yeah. So like you have to pay attention. Mm-hmm. That's well. That's like I'm watching Monster. That's um, yeah. I'm, yeah, yeah. To solve that, I mostly like I put on an episode when I'm eating. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's mostly how I'm getting through it. But yeah, I can't like play Magic and watch it at the same time. <laughs> My cousin would play Rocket League and watch watch uh like subbed anime. I have no idea. Like. I don't even know. And I I, I mean, him, if you're watching like Naruto or whatever or Dragon Ball, like a shonen show, I guess you don't yeah. need to see most of it. Those <laughs> the pacing <laughs> yeah, is so yeah. bad on those shows, it's fine. Yeah. If it's cool, they'll show it again. <laughs> <laughs> Catch it on round 3. Yeah. Well, like that was the like Watching Dragon Ball Z, sometimes it feels like you could just watch the next on and the previously ons, and that would be <laughs> you'd get everything you needed. Yeah, I have. I mean, I've reached like. I think this might be a peak in my life in regards to like amount of content that I currently want to consume, and mm. there's just there's not enough time. There's books I want to read. There's other no. books I want to read. There's comics I want to look Don't at. Don't worry, Ben. It, it's only going to get worse and worse from here. Yeah. Until you just stop caring about more stuff or whatever, I guess. I mean, I don't, you know. Until your heart breaks and you don't, you no longer have the desire to learn. Are you talking about Star Wars? I feel like you're talking about Star Wars. <laughs> that went 100 to 0 real quick. Thanks. Oh, man. Thanks, guys. I was so full of energy and enthusiasm. You fucking killed it. Just beat it all down. <sighs> all because C3PO can't speak a Sith language. I was banned for some reason. <laughs> Ridiculous. It really did, though. I was even like High Republic stuff that's come out. I just. Okay. Wow. They really broke you know, your heart. You know what? You know what? That leads actually perfectly. I'll be a little bit. I don't want to like. I don't want to dump on anyone who enjoys this thing, but I also just cannot bring myself to look forward to it in any way whatsoever. The new Avatar stuff that was announced like the studio and everything i don't know like oh yeah i feel like i'm going to see it so that i can discuss it maybe depending on what it is but that's still that's just the that's like my original trilogy i'm like just leave the original thing i don't need any like zero zero extra things yeah uh-huh I hold, you know, I generally hold my tongue because, like, if people are having an excited discussion, I'm not just going to be like, hey, guess what? It's going to be stupid. <laughs> but, yeah, I have no idea if it'll be good or not. I don't know. Korra had its moments. Yeah. 
I mean, I'm far more interested in the train wreck that might be the Netflix adaptation now. <laughs> like, creators aren't involved and all that shit. I'm ready to watch that, that one. That I don't care. <laughs> I mean, I don't truly care, but like, I'm down to do a little shit talking if it's bad. Nah. I just not watch things that I think I'm going to hate. That's cool, too. There's so many things I want to experience that are I know I love that I don't have time for. I don't know that I have to watch a whole TV show. that If it's like a movie I might hate, that's one thing. A whole show, that's not going to happen. I mean, to be fair, me saying that I want and will watch a show, completely yeah. different from me doing it. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Man, I'm going to play enough. this game six years from now. Maybe uh -huh. for like two hours. <laughs> uh -huh. I'm looking forward to that Diamond and Pearl remakes. Yeah, I you know, I was I was fully expecting to see a remake in like the same style as Sword and Shield, and uh -huh. I was honestly like. 100% surprised that they went for more not like exact obviously not exactly like a Link's Awakening thing but more of a you know more of a, a switch up like that um yeah they made they they turned the thing from pixel art to 3D models but they mostly kept the yeah and it's like the spirit of how it looked like yeah. the camera angle it, intact it it made me much more interested I I need I'll I'll need to know much more about it because I've I've learned yeah. that Pokemon I'm just at a thing is... where it's been long enough for me since I've played yeah a Pokemon game and Temtem has gotten to the I played enough of that where I've just that game is so fucking grindy yeah uh, I kind of got sick of it so I'm kind of I'm kind of more in the mood now for the easiness of pokemon or it's just sure. like you you don't i don't have to like go to the, the pokemon center and heal after every fucking battle mm -hmm. maybe like yeah just oh. just like let me level up and have a fine time and not make it hard i i might i'm actually more in the market for that at this point yeah yeah I like and I'm, like I'm still thinking of I'm actually I'm still thinking of getting Sword and Shield even though every time I ask should, should I do this people are like no. <laughs> I mean yes, but I I think especially now I would hold off. <laughs> Can't, but I'm in the mood now. That's and true. That I game's yeah. not coming till the end of the year. That's a fucking powerful argument. I feel that in my soul. Yeah. Uh huh. Because the the it's not how like it's not actually at some level what's the best game it's like what's the right game for where I feel how I feel right now yeah yeah and I don't know that Sword and Shield is the right one like maybe I should play a different old Pokemon game but mm -hmm. yeah I not too old my I don't think I'm gonna do Crystal which was another one I could have do mm hmm. I, I mean, think I'd I have... rather play a one that's a little more modern. Yeah. Oh, that's fair. Yeah, I'm curious. I mean, for me, part of my thing, uh, a lot of a lot of stuff I in in Pokemon, I thought was like the perfect maybe not the perfect balance. I doubt, like some things could be you know if I'm rolling into the like a late game gym why do you only have three pokemon of the same exact type that sort of thing like you could make it a little tiny bit more difficult but for the most part like i really enjoyed the the pacing of things and and how stuff carried on and, and progressed and blah 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 but there's just so much i the new games that we and we've kind of talked about it before but the new games just between the stupid amount of hand holding combined with the fact that I can't not if if doing like the IV EV training stuff is there and it's accessible I can't not care about it 
I just can't. It's so hard for me to ignore that shit. And in the older games, yeah. you, you, you can just ignore it. Cause it's like so obtuse. It's still stupor there. I don't know. I got into that stuff in Gen 3, so it's hard oh, for me to... It's Yeah, it's there, but like... You have to you have to dig a bit. You have to put in way more effort than like looking at the screen that shows you what all the numbers are exactly. You know? Yeah, but I know, so it's already broken for me, really. Yeah. Once they have natures. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that natures mean stats. Like it's it, that's it more even more than the IV thing cuz those are so direct. Yeah. With like this one stat is shit tier and this one stat's boosted. I see I managed to like I definitely got into caring about that obviously because yeah, it's right there and it's so easy. I managed to break myself back down into how I played like Gen 3 or whatever when I was in second grade. Like I don't want this one. I don't want a fucking jolly hound doom. I want to cranky hound doom or whatever hound doom isn't supposed you to want, be jolly you want, no you want an adamant hound doom because that makes his attack go up or whatever. i want a personality that fits <laughs> the wanna... fucking pokemon i managed to break uh, myself back into that mindset and i don't want to go back out <laughs> it's a good place to be in for pokemon yeah. and i just if there's if there's too much of of that shit i don't know on the flip side I do also want to, like, have a modern game, and it bugs me because yeah. I I want the modern shit. I want to be able to like potentially play with friends. I want to, um, even now, uh, I I can't fully bring myself to dive into like the the virtual console games like the Gen One and Two, because if I don't have a game that I can transfer those Pokemon to, what the fuck am I doing? Kind of. You, like you can what, transfer from the virtual console ones. No, yeah, yeah, you can, but only like I can't get them into black and white too, or black and white or anything else. Like there's only hella modern. Oh, because or old. Yeah, yeah. yeah at yeah. that point, uh-huh. and yeah. it makes like it's it's an argument for me because like I want to be able to carry some of that shit. You know, when I'm done with Gen One, I want to be able to. Like, keep those Pokemon or whatever. I don't want to just end and leave it there, necessarily. Um, no, so I'm definitely in there. <laughs> I don't know. It's a weird It's a weird journey. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't have the desire to take my Pokemon from Let's Go Pikachu into another game, really. I that mean, primate yeah. that knows Thunderbolt can live there. That's fine. <laughs> I don't know. I uh, I guess maybe like there's so so there's yes. a part of me that is like was thinking about this and I was thinking about playing um I forget which one I have, but black or white two. Uh-huh. Cuz I ne- I like I played through that one. And then, like, stopped or whatever. Just because I've, I've spent less time with it. Because I don't necessarily just want to play the thing I spent all the time with again. Because I... But I want something like that. Like, it's like when you want something like the thing you liked, but not the thing you liked. One of the good ways to do it is something from around that time mm-hmm. that you just didn't... You missed or whatever. Yeah. It like and that has like Battle Frontier stuff, which I also want. So that, that that's an option I might do. Maybe I'll see yeah. something in that game that I didn't the first time. I don't know. Mm-hmm. So I could play mm. sword. I could play sword. I could play. I think it's white too. I have. I don't remember. Um. Those are really the only, or I could play. Alpha Sapphire or something? Because I never played the Gen 3 remake, really. Gotcha. It came out at a time where I was just not feeling. Yeah. But I feel like I didn't like that remake. I thought it was fine. Reason. I don't... 
love it. I mean, again, for me, like, the, the sprite shit is so important. Yeah. I don't know why, <laughs> but it is. It's what I love. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, I mean, the problem with my problem I have with Black and White 2 is it the loading between going into a Pokemon Center is too long. Yeah. Oh, dude, I mean... <laughs> it's, like, the smallest thing, and it's, like... But it, like, kind of kills me. Dude, that so, I don't know. builds up, though. <laughs> That's, like, going into a Pokemon Center is a, a... You know, you're doing that. It's not, like, yeah. oh, when I enter this one building that you go into, like, twice during mm-hmm. the game. It's, like... Man. Or I could, like, play Soul Silver again, maybe? I don't know. Soul Silver is... Because I have all the games, but... Up. And I've, like... They're all open for new saves mm-hmm. because I've traded I traded everything up. Ah, uh, yeah. So I can kind of restart whatever whatever game I want to. Yeah, without, without losing too much. But I don't know. I don't know what I want to do. Yeah, I think. If I'm, I mean, it always feels like I'm kind of, it's like a, I'm not hungry, but I could eat sort of situation with Pokemon. I've just definitely learned that I need to be, I need to be picky about it. The only games I own right now, like I have Soul Silver and Emerald. So yeah. those are generally enough. Oh, and, and Pokemon Mystery yeah. Dungeon, which is actually just my sure. favorite Pokemon for me, it's like there are parts of my brain that get filled, and I don't really have a RPG or grind thing that I've been playing. Mm-hmm. But I have like a so many games I also want to play. Like I don't know. Yeah, I could yeah. probably entertain myself otherwise. But like having a like bouncing between like Pokemon or WoW. <laughs> And like magic and Dota or Hots are like the pillars kind of for me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh for like what just regular bread and potato meat and potatoes video gaming yeah. that my brain can get needs for sustenance. And I kind of I don't have like the progression game right now. Yeah. And I kind of keep falling back into trying to play magic and then, like, not feeling like I'm getting fed properly currently. Yeah. No, I I feel that. I'm just, like, I don't know. Some stuff yeah, it's is been long enough back. since I quit playing WoW again. <laughs> <laughs> that I could think about, like, Pokemon and and I Temtem wasn't doing it for me last time I tried. It mm-hmm. was it was too grindy. Yeah, I'm just like I'm really anything I play is going to be like until the end of March, and then Isaac's gonna come out, and then nothing else is gonna fucking matter. Cause gotcha. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, Basically. the other thing is, like, I, I want to play Persona 5 Strikers, and I haven't had time to do that all week, so. Yeah. My <laughs> it just came out. So that's probably the actual answer is play Persona 5 Strikers for now. <laughs> but I don't know. I, it's part of I me that just wants to play Pokemon. It's just, it's just part of me just what that's just what I want to do. I don't know. Yeah, man. Yeah, just, you gotta just go with the flow. And never ever finish any game ever. Except for Far Cry 3. Like eight years after it comes out. You can do that. <laughs> That's allowed. <laughs> uh, that was such a weird one. I still don't like so many games that I'm not really. Isn't that the ever... game you can finish by like the dude tells you to wait here and you can just wait there and then the game ends? <laughs> I think, I think yeah. that's Far Cry 3. I think, I think it is the third one, yeah. Or it's four. It's either three or four. It's, yeah, it's, it's one of them. 
which I love. That's such a good. That's so funny. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> um, yeah, my my like, I don't know if it's a problem, but like my constant thing with games is that it it sounds like an exaggeration, but I really don't think it is. I just always want to be playing Isaac. Except there are other things that I want to play also, and I can't do them at the same time because that's not how my <laughs> hands work or how my brain works. Oh. Like, hmm. I can't simultaneously play things on each screen. It wouldn't go well. So I have, I've so like. You, you play I Isaac actually, and then you finish I, your I, run and then you play something else. It wouldn't happen, man. I would just immediately want another hit. Uh. <laughs> That's how it goes. I've told myself, like, I'll just do a run, and then I do, like, eight. Yeah, yeah. It never works out. Mm hmm The only thing keeping me from That's why the thing with magic is, like, I'm like, okay, I'll just do <laughs> a match. Yeah. But also, matches can be so fucking long. And it's like, I just want a ladder. I just want to climb the ladder. And it's like, yeah, dude. no. N now all your free time is gone. Time to go to yep. bed or whatever <laughs> yeah man dude that's how it fucking happens get back i would get back from work when the world was still open I'd be like yeah we'll do a little isaac game before dinner and then it's like six hours later i'm like okay well can't quit on a win can't leave on a loss gotta keep going that's like my yep. <laughs> i also am waiting for something to be better than isaac but feel exactly the same hasn't hasn't <laughs> happened yet you need exactly isaac but better i mean it could have happened if the uh, when they when they introduced the the modding tools or modding api or whatever if it weren't shit mm. that would basically be the ultimate experience but it's still ridiculously non-intuitive from what i understand so mm. all these people were excited about like making tailoring the game to what they wanted it to be and then they couldn't. <laughs> but yeah. C'est la vie. Yeah. Also like oh man, you mentioned Persona, like I still haven't beaten Persona 5. I haven't even got pretty good Pokemon. I game. haven't even gotten far in Persona 5. That game is long. <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, back in the day, doing that Persona 4 in like, well, Persona 4 Golden in like five days or whatever. Damn. <laughs> I just played, oh my god, I still remember that weekend. It was just a fucking blur. It was a blur of best girls and accidentally <laughs> killing Na Nanako. Like, it was, oh, what a great weekend that was. <laughs> Game just is very good. Like 72 hours of Persona 4 Golden. Oh. Yeah. It was incredible. And I had like never heard of it. And I had tried it. And oh, it just yeah. I think I, I think, saw the first two hours of that game like three times before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I then played it. Yeah. One of those times was me playing it. But then I got through those same two hours that I'd seen before. I was like, alright, I can I gotta stop. <laughs> yeah. I got those two hours of just story and not interaction, dude. Yeah, I remember... is such a th but for someone is such like a vibe thing. Like when you get in the zone with that game, oh, you it doesn't just live stop. here now. Yeah, it's just where you live. I still, I had the soundtrack downloaded for a while from Persona Four. Yeah, I like can't. I heard all of those songs too many <laughs> times and too close of a span, so like it's not. It doesn't. It doesn't. I, don't, I can't focus on the song being a bop. I only focus on me, like, running through the town or whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just ruined. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, oh. I could play through... If I want a Pokemon, I could just play through Persona 5 Royale. Yeah. I mean, I'm totally, like... <sighs> someone out there needs to combine a little more... A little more there is a combination of like 
Pokemon, Persona, and Honey Pop that someone needs to come out with. Just watch that money come in. It's just Persona. You're just describing Persona again. I'm not. <laughs> You are, though. Naoto did not send me any scandalous selfies. Okay, but Persona 5, you make your teacher dress up as a maid. <laughs> You're just describing Persona. I mean, maybe I dive back in. <laughs> Yeah, I think I've only beaten like the first dungeon. Like the I got the first like the the whatever the gym teacher guy. Like I got him pinned mm -hmm. down, and I'm I'm at the second yeah. like dungeon area, like the artist house or whatever. Yeah, something. But that was when I was um, uh, I was going hard in that, and then, like I was ready to dive in, but then it was like. I didn't want to be the TV is like right next to Anya when she's working, uh -huh. so I had to pack it in. Which Gotta whatever. You get headphones for your TV. I think it was also just or the act playing of me, on the act of oh, me being playing there. a video like, game play, right there while she's play. working. <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. Bad times, yeah, but it's fine now. <laughs> it's fine. Now the I mean, table is PlayStation, you can just plug a headset, like an audio jack, into the controller. You're good. It is very nice that way, yeah. Not being able to do that with the Switch is actually infuriating. <laughs> <laughs> like, the fact that it doesn't just work. Like, if I want to mm. play on the TV and also use headphones. Mm. There's, like, some dongles you can get, but... Eh. Eh. Anyway, 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 this was a uh, good talk for like 90 episode. minutes. Yeah, it's a yeah. nice, nice conversation. I just want to shout out some. Oh no, I lost the page. I wanted to shout out some A24 movies. Okay, I, love I liked. Uh, the big one is. Uh, uh, the Rosa? last black man in San Francisco. That's like one of my favorite movies. Uh, recent years, for sure. Where? What is it? The last black man in San Francisco. Oh, okay. Came out in 2019. That one's really good. Um, just looking through the list. Ugh. Oh, these are just oh Swiss Army Man is a fucking trip. It's the one where Daniel Radcliffe is a corpse that oh that's is like a Swiss help. Army knife. Uh, the the basic <laughs> idea was of the character riding uh Daniel Radcliffe's corpse like it's a jet ski and it's powered and it's powered by farts. And it's also Jesus Christ. <laughs> Uh, it's very emotional. <laughs> uh, that one's worth watching. Um, I don't know. There are probably others, <laughs> but those are that. The last black man in San Francisco is really the the big one out of the. Okay. Good movies for me. I mean, watching the big one is rewatching Uncut Gems, but just the scene where he's like, "I'm gonna come." That's watch the climax. Sort of hey. people have. It's a bad drug trip. That sounds Literally. like not my jam. <laughs> also, orgy. Bad drug trip orgy. Um, that movie's okay. My my problem with that movie is the best part of it is the first shot. The opening shot is so good. I don't even <laughs> like the rest of the movie as much. 
but yeah, like Uncut Gems, Lighthouse, those are those are also very good movies. I don't know. Yeah, I thought I had more, but now, but stuff isn't standing out to me as much. There are a lot. There are a bunch of movies that's like that movie was okay. Minari will probably yeah. never get watched by me. When I hover over the link, um, it just shows a child with a stick. I'm out. <laughs> That's not what I wanted. Like, what is Gamera going to save him? Does he steal a submarine? Been there, done that. No, thank you. Jacob and Monica work sexing chickens at the nearby hatchery. Fuck yeah. Finally, from something I can relate to coming from Wisconsin. <laughs> That is definitely a movie I would have watched if I could have seen it with my friend in a movie theater. And I just don't know that it's going to happen. Yeah. With me at home. Yeah. I don't know. Movies used to be good. That's true. They did (laughs) used to be good. And now... Their sequels, 25 years after the fact, are just as good, obviously. I mean, we haven't watched High Noon 2 yet, so. Uh, The made-for-TV High Noon 2. It has David Carradine in it. I'll, I'll pass. You watch The Birds 2, Land's End. It's also a made-for-TV sequel. Look, man, I've already done my... I've paid my fucking dues. I watched <laughs> Son of Kong. And then I watched Mighty Joe Young. That was your mistake. You no, made no. Mighty bed. Joe Young was your mistake. <laughs> no. I, I had I a bad saying. time. You it watched wasn't Son even, of Kong. It wasn't you even were, a kaiju you were film. Determined. I was lied to. I was tricked. Dare I say, I was even bamboozled. You watched Son of Kong. You were obligated. I was not. I threw good. I threw good time after bad. Because they were both. Yeah, you watched Son of Kong. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not saying like it wasn't a it wasn't a great move. Hell, you watched King Kong. <laughs> okay, that there's that there's it's that's reasonable. <laughs> like that's it's culturally significant. It's like watching the first Godzilla movie. Don't or... you dare slander <laughs> Gogeta. Don't like say that. his name. <laughs> How dare you? Gojira is such a better movie. I mean, yes. But even, like, if someone has zero interest in anything Godzilla, seeing the Godzilla movie is still, like... The the one you say is, I watched Godzilla Raids again, which really nobody needs to watch. I'll fucking (laughs) do it. That movie sucks. Godzilla Raids again was not very good. Yeah. I also bailed out of I'm the... just saying, you watched Son of Kong before you've watched two of the Godzilla movies that we didn't watch. Well, that's your fault, not mine. <laughs> that's the fault of a, not making a clean bracket. <laughs> Compromises were made. Yeah. But it's necessary. And now I have all these other kaiju films to watch. Yeah, like Rebirth of Mothra 1, 2, and 3. Or uh, Death Kappa. (laughs) Here's my question. Do you think Yakuza Apocalypse counts as a kaiju movie because of the... I actually thought of that. Frog king. <laughs> <laughs> I think no. Just because 
Um, it's not like it's not prominent enough throughout the whole thing. Yeah, like that's been part of. But my... I think it's enough that it could make a bad Wikipedia list. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I I do love that you're. Uh... I treat it. It's like the uh, the basketball Hall of Fame. Where it, the principles of the basketball hall of fame, there are people in there like, why is he in the basketball hall of fame? It's like everybody makes the basketball hall of fame, as long as you're <laughs> you're, sl- you're slightly qualified, you just get in. It's fine. Hell it's yeah, not, it's not that exclusive a club. I do love that you people. editing that list, like uh-huh. force the people to analyze the rest of the list. <laughs> <laughs> they had to come to terms with themselves. Look, man. Wikipedia is horseshit if you actually know a little bit about <laughs> what those articles are about generally. Yeah. It's kind of wild. Oh, also, um, yeah, Conga was a good time. In a, like, yep. in a, in a, like, bad movie you watch with friends way. I could see it being that. yeah, yeah. You know what? No, it's it's a good time. It has that. It has a scene. It has that scene. It's it. I think it was actually worse than King Kong in some ways, because it was Oof. it was. At least in King Kong, it's like part of the plot as a weak argument, but an argument. This had nothing. They literally, I, like, when they talk about, like, this guy being stuck in a jungle and he found a chimp or whatever, and they, like, gloss over it. And I'm like, oh, shit, cool. We're just, like, skipping all the racist stuff. And then he's, like, in a classroom with, like, it's, like, a two or three minute scene of him just, like, showing footage of, like, indigenous people and just, like, talking about them and being, like, su- I mean, you know, the classic 60s uh-huh. bullshit. And I'm like, what the yeah. f- this isn't relevant at all. Why is this here? It's like a little shitty documentary in the middle of the film that's horrible. You just cut yeah. it out. You'd lose absolutely nothing. So. As was the style at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Look, man, they need to be explained who the good guys and bad guys are. They need to be told who is right. So oh, yeah. They know. Naturally. Uh, email us circlepodcast at gmail.com I said Soul Circle Pod on Twitter I'm on Twitter at Comic Panels you can find our episodes hosted at anchor.fm slash salt circle and on major podcasting platforms like Apple and Spotify and Google I'm yeah I'm not anywhere but if for some reason you want to hear me talk more about how I can't stop imagining a box cutter going down my forearm. Uh, I do another podcast, Pier 39, with a friend of mine. Yeah. Yeah. Do your best not to imagine box cutters going down your limbs. I'm so upset that you really can't handle box cutters and that the show I want to talk about has such a prominent like just complete nightmare scenario for you that I just can't make you watch. I it yeah. upsets me. <laughs> I mean, like I'll look away. I'll just fucking leave the room. If it's bad enough, I will just leave the room. I'll just. I don't even want to hear that shit. That was actually the thing I wanted to quickly say. Same mod had cursed sound effects. Absolutely cursed. <laughs> In one bit, it was so unnecessary. The most serial uh-huh. unfriendly thing. But yeah, yeah. Alright, peace. Yeah. Peace.